Alrighty, not, not a requested video, but just a video I wanted to make. I just wanted to point out really just one thing about this question. Um, and that is the utilization of a specific concept you learned back in your algebra days, which you may have forgotten. Let me elaborate. Here are the details, not many details. I just have my timeline here. And we have uh, basically want to find the present value of an annuity where the payments are made in this particular fashion. First one's made at the end of year three. Uh, the next one, uh, uh, any payment after that is seven every seven years thereafter. So I have another payment of one at 10, another payment at one at, uh, at 17. And then I have a question mark because they want me to make end payments. So I want to know what in the heck uh, what value is this? What year is this actually? And this is really, this is really the only reason I wanted to do this more or less because um, once I figure that out, then nothing fancy is really going on. Maybe one little other trick. So let me show you what I mean. Um, think about this for a second. I'm going to, I'm going to do what your math teacher loves to do. I used to teach college math. So um, this is nothing new for me. You should have been used to this sort of thing, right? Recall. The nice thing about math is you have to know everything you've ever known. It's also the downfall of learning math. Recall, arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequence. Arith, I can't spell. Medic sequence. I claim that my payments are made Basically, they form the, the years in which the payments are made form an arithmetic sequence. Here's what I mean. The nth term, if you recall, the nth term of an arithmetic sequence is the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. Let me just elaborate. The nth term is equal to the first term. Uh, plus the common difference times n minus 1. This is just gives you the terms of an arithmetic sequence. What is my first term in terms of the years in which I made payments? Uh, for our cases, so then, a n, the nth term, the nth term of the arithmetic sequence is given by the first term. When is my first term payment made? 3. What is the common difference? 7 and minus 1. This is the year of my last payment. Think about it for a second. This is the nth term of this arithmetic sequence. I make n payments. The payments form an arithmetic sequence. This is the nth payment. So this literally is a question mark. So I'm going to replace this. This guy goes up here. So this takes care of this. This takes care of this. This is, the nth term is, I'm just going to write this way, 3 plus 7 and minus 1. From here, you're pretty much good to go. Now, these types of questions, they, they are relatively unusual. We want to find basically a closed form formula for the present value of these payments, these cash flows. Um, uh, when you're doing this, I recommend it's easy to get hung up and just look at all the solutions and be like, God, how do I get there? How do I get there? Right? Just do what you would do. Just literally, just, just, just find the present value make sure you've you've done it mathematically proper and then manipulate the the equation you have let me show you what i mean let me show you what i mean so let me get rid of this nonsense okay hopefully this makes sense to you now i'm just going to find the present value and they, i think they call it x i don't really care what they call it but anyway i'm going to find the present value so x which is the present value okay pb which is x which is equal to Okay, just discount all these terms back to zero. Okay, so this is v cubed plus v to the 10 plus dot, 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 all the way to v to the 3 plus 7 and minus 1. Now, this is just what comes to a situation which is a preference. I want to take out v cubed. You don't have to. You can absolutely write down uh, the fine, this is a finite geometric sum. Write down the formula if you like, as is. I like to factor out the first term typically. So this is v cubed. Okay. Now, what am I going to put up top here? 
Uh, well, the common ratio, in other words, what am I multiplying each term by to get to the next term, it is geometric, is v to the seventh, right? So this is one minus uh, v, the common ratio. I need to take the common ratio to some power. This power indicates how many terms of the finite geometric series there are. How many terms are there? I've gone through uh, an argument like this with you before. Let me write this one other way, just to illustrate here. This is v cubed, one plus v to the seven, plus dot dot dot, plus v uh, to the seventh, n minus one. So hopefully you can agree, right? This is equal to this. This illustrates, I think, this, this sort of shows you more clearly, not only the common ratio, but how to find this power of, of v to the seventh n. How many, we need how many terms there are. How many terms are there here? I claim there are n terms. You can think of this a couple of different ways. Now, how do I know there are n terms? First of all, there better be y. They told me we're making n payments. All right, these are my payments, so there better be n of them. How else? I told you one of the also, I've also told you one of the annoying things about this exam is counting. I'm telling you, there's so many counting arguments, is ridiculous. This is how you count something like this. I've told you this before, but I'll tell you again. You start with the last term, and you subtract the power before the first term. This is to the zero, this is to the n minus one. There are n minus one minus negative one, which equals n terms. That's how you count a finite, uh, basically, sequence, a finite set of terms like that. You take the highest, subtract one less than the lowest. n minus one minus negative one is n. That takes care of how many terms? You can do that anyway, right? Now I'm bringing that up because that goes here. That's how you find this power for a finite geometric sum. You need to figure out how many terms you're summing divided by one minus the common ratio. So this is what we have. This is what we have. Let me, um, well, I don't need to clean it up too much. This is equal to the following. This is v cubed minus uh, v to the seven n plus three divided by one minus v to the seven. Now is a time where you want to look at the options and say, how do I get this to look like what we have? They have uh, for their options a bunch of uh, annuity immediate symbols. Annuity immediate symbols. This is one of them, so that's we're in good shape there. You need to be, I don't know, somewhat clever. This is a typical situation in math. Though. I'm going to cleverly add zero to the numerator. I'm going to add zero to the numerator. Okay. So I plan this is equal to the following. This is equal to. Um, I'm going to do it this way. This is. Um, I'm going to put it this way. Negative v uh, to the seven n plus three. Okay. And then I have uh, plus v cubed. I'm going to cleverly add zero. How about I add one and then I subtract one? I've added zero, right? That's legal. That's legal. One minus v to the seventh. Perfectly legal, right? I added zero to the numerator. I changed nothing about the expression. No big deal. Why would I do this? Why would I do this? This is equal to, this is equal to one minus v to the seven n plus three minus one minus v cubed divided by one minus v to the seven. I claim we're done if you look at this properly. If I divide top and bottom by i, the effective interest rate, these give me a bunch of annuity immediates. I hope this is clear to you. Convince yourself, multiply top and bottom. Well, actually divide, divide the numerator by i, divide the denominator by i. These are my formulas for annuity immediate. So this is equal to, this is equal to, well, this right here is an annuity immediate. This is a sub seven n plus three minus, this is an annuity immediate, a three divided by uh, a seven. That's my answer. So that takes care of it. Um, again, the main reason I brought this up is because I wanted you to remember your arithmetic sequence formula. I've had to use this a few times. Make sure you know it. It can be useful for counting things. All right. Hope it was helpful. Tell me what you think.